a recording on this so that you can go back and rewatch it, but also for those that uh, that aren't able to make it. So, um, you know, if they've registered or if they just want to go back and watch it at a later date, they can. So anyway, nonetheless, I'm going to start. This is about gain fees. Um, I have a counterpart. So my name's Trey Cassavery. Let me start with that. My name's Trey Cassavery, head of implementation. Uh, but I also officiate football. Um, I've been with Arbiter for mm, going on five years now. Um, Arbiter One being my strong suit. But I also want to kind of gauge the interest on on these uh, on these trainings, if you will, on these webinars, um, and cover a specific topic. I hope this I hope this um, takes off well. So. Um, nonetheless, I've got a, a, a coworker, Sabino Garcia. He should be in the uh, in here as well. He's monitoring the chat. Uh, chat should be available for you guys, so um, feel free to ask any questions. But I do I do ask one favor: keep it um, topic specific. Meaning, since we're covering game fees, if you've got any questions related around game fees, feel free to ask. Sabino can cover them. Um, he's swift with Arbiter One too, but Towards the end of this, I'll uh, I'll stick on and um, answer any questions verbally that I can. So, anyway, with that, let me uh, let me get started. So I'm I'm in my group, one that I manage, um, and I've added a couple of games in here, and I'm using these for examples. Um, by the way, if you know game fees. A lot of this will probably be um, reminders. You might be in here for refreshers, and maybe you don't know anything about game fees, but I'm going to start from the very beginning and cover everything that I can. So these two games are my examples. If we open up the slots, there are no game fees, and that's that's on purpose. Um, let me show you a, something here, too. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about Bill 2 specifics as well. But anyway, nonetheless, I've got no game fees on here, and that is the indication that there are no game fees set up for this particular sport and level. Where game fees live, and the first thing you got to have is the payroll tab. If you don't, if you don't see the payroll tab, then ask your lead admin to give you the permission if, if they're so willing. Um, if they, if you do have the payroll tab, then click it and you'll hit what looks like this. Uh, game fees live exactly where they say game fees. Um, pretty straightforward. When you go into game fees, this is what it looks like. Now, I'm in a group that is one sport. You might be in a group that has football, basketball, softball. You might have multiple sports lifted here, listed here. And the reason why I tell you that is this is where you would find the different sports. So you can set game fees up sport specific, level specific, and even bill to specific. And I'll cover that in a minute. Um, just for this case, we'll start off with all. So um, how I instruct everybody uh, when I talk to Arbiter One um, admins or assigners is I always tell them to um, create a game fee that is basically an umbrella. So for example, if your JV games are um, $65 and the majority of the schools or the teams that you cover paid $65, then you can create that blanket $65. And then when you need to get down to a specific team or a specific set of teams that pay maybe a little more, uh, maybe a little less, whatever the case may be, then you can create that. So let's create, I'm going to create a game fee, a my blanket game fee for my varsity games. Um, my game, my uh, game statuses are going to be normal. I'm going to select all my bill twos. I'm going to say my level of varsity seven man. I'm going to say game fee of a uh, game status of normal games. I'm going to select all. Now you can select one, two, three games. This is where linking comes into play. Um, the system is smart enough that if you've got a three games set and they pay the, the three games pay 150 bucks each. But if you go to four games, let's say you've got a four game link set and that ups the game fee to $150 each, then the, the system is smart enough to recognize that if you've got four games linked together, you can set a game fee based on those four games. 
But if all the game, if all varsity games pay the exact same amount, regardless of the number of games that are linked together, then just select all, and that will encompass every one of them, regardless of which ones you link. So, for example, um, I'm sure the vast majority of you are dealing with uh, a freshman and a JV and a varsity game linked set. If the freshman game pays, so I'm in. I, li I'm, I live in Texas. I officiate in Texas. In Texas, we get 55 bucks. I think it's 55 bucks for a freshman game, uh, $65 for a JV game, and then a special note for a varsity game, but that's later. If those three games are linked together, the game fees that you put for each level, as long as they are the same, regardless of the number of games that are linked together, then that game fee will be applied to that level. It won't change regardless of the number of games you've got linked together. Even if you link a bunch of freshman games together or a bunch of JV games together, it doesn't matter. It's going to recognize that this is the game fee for everything. So in this case, I'm going to select all. And this right here where it says officials is where everybody gets tripped up. And I want to harp on this just a little bit. I, I would like for, and I'm advocating for, <laughs> for product to change this nomenclature that you see here from officials to slots. And the reason why I say that is because Arbiter is not smart enough to recognize the number of officials that are on the games. It's smart enough to recognize the number of slots. So let's use let's use a varsity football game, for example. A lot of you are probably five man. Some of them might be seven. Where I'm from, we do seven. Um, but we also do five man games too. If you're setting up a uh, if you're setting up a game that could or if you're setting up a game fee that could possibly have you know uh, three officials on it, four officials on it, five officials on it, then it needs to this really needs to say slots. And when you when you tell yourself slots, it makes a lot of sense. So I could say I'm going to set up a game fee for five officials, and when I set that up, I'm going to say create. So these are my five officials. Nah. These are my five officials. Ignore the Regent schools down here. So these are my five officials right here. Um, the, the reason why everybody gets tripped up is you look and you go, well, there's more than five officials. That's true. What you're, what you're telling the system is, I need to set a game fee for these officials in the event that they're on the game. And I keep telling myself, it's, it's slots. I need to set it, set a game fee for the slots that you see that, that are on that game. So we'll just go down and say three, four, uh, four, five. So these five officials are going to get sixty-five bucks, whatever, and we're going to apply that. Okay. So so now if I go, if I uh, let me. Um, Let me continue on and I'll, I'll circle back on the slots piece. I'm going to cascade this down to the games that are existing and I only have two in there and that's on purpose. If I cascade this and the, what, what I like to do is say all slots. What cascade does is if you have games already existing in your schedule, then when you edit a game fee, you have to cascade it down to the games that are already living. The updates that you do are only to future games that you add at a later date. It has nothing to do with the games that are already existing. You have to cascade them down. In this case, I always just say all slots because that encompasses everything. You could put a date range in here. You could, like if you've got a tournament and this tournament pays uh, $100 versus the 95 or the 85 that you got on a normal scale, then you can adjust the hundred dollars and say I only want to cascade it down to the games that live in the date range of five five through five ten, and you could cascade only those games. Um, the same thing here with verified slots. If you've already got slots that are verified, then you can check this box too, and it will update those slots that are already very verified. If you're familiar with Arbiter, any slot that is verified can't can't really be edited um, very easily, so that's where it gives you the ability to. If you have a game fee that needs to be adjusted, but the slots are already verified, you're basically forcing it. You're forcing the change on slots that are already verified, and that's what that checkbox does. 
I rarely ever check this simply because I, I don't ever run into a case where my slots are already verified, but that doesn't mean that I haven't used it before. So anyway, we'll carry on. So if I say cascade, it's going to tell me zero slots are updated. Okay. And that's on purpose. I knew it was going to say zero. So let's go back to the schedule. And remember, I updated a game fee for only five officials, right? So if I take off the side judge and the field judge of this game, notice what's going to happen to this game right here. There's my 65 bucks. And it's because it's recognizing what slots are on the game. It's not it's not smart enough to know that if I only have five officials assigned to a game that has seven slots on it, it's not going to recognize that five officials are assigned. So just remind yourself that where it says officials on the game fee table, table for lack of better terms, it's actually telling you how many slots are on this game. Because watch, if I take off, if I take one off and it's going to tell me zero, because I don't have a game fee set for four officials. And if I add a fifth, then there's my $65, but nothing here because I didn't put a game fee in for a field judge. So it's, it's game fees are, um, can be complicated. If you know how to make them work though, that it becomes really easy. Uh, so anyway, let me add it. Let me add all the slots back to this just real quickly. All right, so back to my game fees, payroll, game fees. And again, I'm going to stick with all, normal, all. You can say all if you want to. Um, I don't think I have one created, do I? Yeah, I do. So what it does is notice it goes one official, two official, three officials. The reason why that's beneficial for officials is because if, if, it's, if, it's, if everybody gets 95 bucks, let's say, um, then you can just say all, click on all, check this all box right there and say 95 bucks and apply it in every slot, regardless of the number on the game. Even if you remove, if you add, it doesn't matter. It's always going to say 95 bucks. That can be very beneficial. If you're more structured, if you say two officials gets a uh, hundred dollars, one official gets 150 because he's doing more work since there's only one on the game versus two. Three officials gets 95 bucks. If you're structured that way, then you actually have to pick and choose the number of slots, officials that, are, that you see here. That's the way that this column right here works. And it always, every time I talk to an admin, it always trips them up. Well, I, I told it just one slot, you know, one official, and then I've filled everything out. But what, what's not registering is you actually have to put the number of slots that are going to be on the game and then it will work. So for my examples, I actually have seven. Uh, I actually have seven slots on the game, and I know that we all know that because we looked at it. So when I set my structure up as such, and I say create, then this will appear. the The same table will appear. The only difference is, is it's going to say seven. So for those seven, um, you know what? Tutorial. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need it. So. If I uncheck and say delete and say OK, my game fees are gone. So now, um, so I need to say these seven officials, five, six, seven. All right, so check all the boxes. These seven officials are going to get $95. Notice that I've got, uh, notice that I've got um, game clocks, play clocks. And I actually need to remove the game clock because I didn't mean to do that. So I've got game clocks, play clocks, chains, and you can and notice the chain is completely different from what the from what the uh, on field officials get. You can do that. It's that intuitive of a of a of a, a system, I guess, or a, whatever I'm trying to say, of a feature. It's that intuitive of a feature. So now that I've got my game fees set, I can cascade them. So I check all the boxes. Say a cascade. I want to cascade all the slots because I've already got games that are existing and I go cascade and it should say 14 slots have been updated, which is true. So if I go schedule. And for the sake of it, I'm just going to open them all up. There's my 95, right? And even if I were to add a game, so let's just throw in a game Huddo versus Harper. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if I say save. 
So all the games going forward for this particular level is going to be 95 bucks. Um, so there's 95, 95, and 95, right? So that is my blanket, uh, that's my blanket game fee structure, okay? If we need to get specific, and let's say we're gonna do it for this very first game, this Austin Aikens, then what you can do is go back to game fees and say, all right, Austin Aikens, and, and this can be district, this can be team, you can select a multiple, whoa, you can select multiple ones if you want to, but I've only got one game in here and this is the example that I'm going to use. All right, so anytime there is a game that has the bill two of Austin Aikens on it, and the level is going to be varsity seven man, game status is going to be uh, normal, all games, all games in the system, I don't care what it is, all games that have that build two on it that are linked together, that have the level of varsity seven man, that have seven officials on it, then I need that to, uh, I need that to say, uh, they're gonna pay 150, because they're just special. So now, if I go all, and say view, because I've already created one before, Anything that doesn't have a bill to listed there, that's my blanket. That's the terminology I'm giving it. That's my blanket game fee. Anything that says specific, any bill to that's specific, that's going to be the update. So what I can do is go cascade, check them all and go cascade and say 21 slots because that's seven times three. So now you'll see that the Aikens game is different from the uh, from all the other games, okay? And that is a way for you to, again, set a structure if you have certain things that pay different. Um, there is a, uh, the, the linking, like I said earlier, um, I don't have enough games in here to show you the difference of, of linking between a JV game and a varsity game. Um, to show you that that it doesn't matter how many games you have as long as you select all. I can't give you that example, but I can do that later on. Um, the other thing underneath game fees that I can show you, and this gets this starts to get really into the weeds. Um, and I don't use it all that often, but I do know of groups that do. It's this cross level selection right there. And the reason why or the the reason that's there and the reason why people use it, is if I select this, then I can say for um, if a freshman A game and a JV game are linked together, and it's got four officials on it, and I can say create, then what it's going to give me is something that looks like this. And this is where you can say, all right, the JV game pays if it's, uh, and and really this actually gets specific to uh, to a bill to too. So let me let me actually select a bill to. Um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because if if there's a bill, if if this team or this school is charged with paying for the game and they pay a completely different game fee than again, the blanket, then this is where you can say, all right, for the JV games, these four officials are going to get uh, uh, 65 bucks. And for the um, for the uh, for the freshman game, these official these four officials are going to get fifty five dollars, and that's what this cross level that's what this cross level checkbox does there. I don't know if anybody or if any of you have used that before, but that cross level um, I've run into more issues using it than I have um, not using it. Uh, I'm just a, if you've got, like I said, if you've got a JV game and they all pay the same, hopefully they all pay the same because it makes this easier, then that's the, the, the previous way of how I explained it, of just saying JV, all games, normal, and creating it, that makes it easier than using this cross level. Not trying to shy you away from cross level at all. I'm just showing you that this is, if you've got a JV game and a freshman game that pay completely different, and you link those two games together, 
in that structure, that's what this game D is going to read. The referee, umpire, line uh, H and the L are going to get 65. And the referee, umpire, H and L are going to get 55 for, for a freshman game. Honestly, where I run into this the most is in soccer. When the referee gets paid more than the ARs, um, a lot of times this is where the cross level comes into play. Uh, so, and like I said, it's 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 a lot easier if you come in and set your game fees up first. So I was actually in this group preparing for, it's a football group, I was preparing for next year. Um, it's a lot easier if you come in here and set up your game fees before you start adding your games. <laughs> um, because then, so like if I come here and I say all and view, then like say I needed to, um, really, say I needed to, uh, oh. Okay. You're on cross level. That's why it's not showing up. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. So if I needed to come in here and, um, you know, update game fees before a season, say you get a pay increase, then come in here, update your game fees, then add your games. But if you forget to do it, not a big deal. If you forget to do it, and then, uh, then you can come in here and, like I said, check the box, click on Cascade. I would say all slots because you just it just captures all of them. Um, but if you really need to search for a specific date range, you can. I always just use all slots. Say all slots, cascade it. It's going to show me zero because there's no games in here. But when you do that, then it will update those game fees. Um, I didn't think this was going to take a full hour. I just scheduled it for an hour. But uh, but that's that is game fees in a nutshell. Um, thanks for unmuting, Sabino. Is there anything specific that I ought to that I ought to cover? Um, I'm thinking yeah, of one yeah. thing, which is where I'm going to navigate to. But if I have anything else, let me know. There, there is a couple of questions that I do see that might need a little bit more of explanation. So there, there is game fees with ratings specifically or rankings. Um, is there a way that? Um, a game fee can be applied when you're assigning that rating to an official, and then that game fee can be filled automatically by the rating. So I guess what you're saying is an official that's that's ranked 100 might get paid more than a 200. Yeah, and that's no. that common sense. Yeah, no, there's not. Um, the only way that I've I've run into that before, and the only way that I have been able to to make that work is made it level specific. Um, and, and I say that where, you know, you have a, you, you create a level that says uh, that, that you have all your 100 slots on, and then maybe it's the same level, but it's got all your 200 slots on it. Then you have to create a game fee for both of those. There is no way to create one level, one game with different, with different rankings and apply a game fee for that ranking. Excuse me, and apply a game fee for that ranking. Cool. And uh, just another one. Um, so concerning the cross levels, I, I see there's um, a, a question about the cross levels here. So there, there's one assigner here that needs a cross level because they're uh, they have different fees for JV only, and the JV games are linked to the varsity games. Is there a way that you can apply the game fee that would be specifically different for the JV and another different game fee for the varsity, or would they both have to be unlinked in order to apply that? No, the cross level, if I'm understanding, the cross level should do that. So you got a JV game that's linked to a varsity game. The JV game pays different than than the varsity game. Right. OK, so um, so this might answer the question here. So uh, let me see if I can find one just real quickly. Uh, right there. All right. So these two games, game 170 and 88. Let me let me get that actually filtered down even better. 170 and 88. Ah, 88. Okay, so these two games are linked together. One's a seventh grade and one's a JV. If I open these up, notice that the game fee is different for one game than it is a different game. Now, if, 
a little trick here. If you hover over the game fee itself, it'll tell you what the game fee is, what the travel is, and what the per diem is. If you didn't know that, I don't even know. I hope you can. Can you see that on the screen? At least I hope you can. I think um, we can see. Okay, so the same thing goes down here. The fifty-five dollars is completely different from the from the fifty dollars that you see on the seventh grade game, and these two games are linked together. In this particular group, and the reason, again, if you notice, it's I'm in this group as well. It's one of the ones that I manage. I know that I'm not running cross level in this group, and the reason being is because all seventh grade games pay fifty bucks. All JV games pay six. Uh, what was this? Fifty-five bucks. Okay. So I know that I can get away with having a blanket game fee of fifty dollars for the seventh grade game, having a blanket game fee for the fifty-five dollars for the JV game, and I can link those two together, and the system is not going to change any of the game fees because it's all games across the board. But if if I need to use cross level in the sense that Let's just use Liberty Christian School as the example. They don't follow the they don't follow the blanket structure that I've set up. They pay um, for their seventh grade games. They pay uh, eighty five dollars for seventh grade, which would be fantastic, and then ninety five dollars for JV games. I would have to then set up a cross level structure in order to accompany Liberty Christian because they pay completely different. Does that make sense? Cool. I think we got that. And um, I think we have another question here about the going back to the issue about um, the ratings or the rankings of the officials. Um, Rachel is asking if we have any similar issues. Uh, they having similar issues about the teams that are charged a flat fee amount for a level, but refs are paid differently based on ratings. Would it be possible to put in a game fee initially for teams uh, for the teams to be charged, but then change the fee before payments go to the officials to match the officials' rankings? Yeah. Um, so I guess the way the way that I would the way that I would uh, accomplish that it sounds like we're starting to dive into uh, bill amounts. So what you could do is you could. You could set a bill amount, if you will, to the school, and this is if you invoice them. Um, I assume that you're invoicing. I'm just going to go under the assumption that you're using bill amounts. If you're not, then what you can do is set a game fee. So let's use the example of, let's just use an even 50 bucks for the game. You can set a game fee for $50. Uh, and then the school can see that they can run a pay sheet uh, and they can they can send the check over or however they're going to do it. And then right before payment is made to the officials, then you can go in underneath each game. Uh, there are future games in here. So underneath each game, if you're familiar with it, you can go underneath the game report and edit every game fee you see here. The problem, the only problem with that that I foresee is you would have to change every game, uh, every game fee that's being paid out because the system, like I said, the system isn't smart enough to recognize your 200s versus your 100s as far as game fee goes, game fees go. So I hope that answered that question. More? Let's see. Uh, we have another question here. Occasionally the game fees is different due to maybe doing a two crew game by one official than fees, uh, than the fees is one point five and need to change fees for only that game um adjust the fee manually just for that game and that slot how does entering game fees and manually affect overall assignment game fees i think i understand that question um peter feel free to correct me if i'm wrong uh what you're saying is Originally, the game was set up for a two-person crew, but one official had to drop, or one official didn't show up, and one official made it to the game. So you had to basically unassign, let's just say you had two officials assigned to the game. You had to unassign the person that didn't make it, which then turned it into a one-person one game. 
So, and feel free to type it in to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to continue with that assumption. So that being the case, all right, thank you. So that being the case, that's where, that's where coming in and setting up your structure of picking, uh, hang on, picking one official right here versus two. So in your case, let's say two officials get paid 50 bucks, but, um, but if one official shows, they get the 50 plus half, right? Which would be 75 bucks extra, at least for, for sake of example, let's just say it is. So in that case, you would say two officials get 50 and you would go $50 here and $50 there. And then you would say in your structure, but if one official is on the game for whatever level you designate, if there's one official on the game, they get paid 75 bucks. Um, so then when you come in and I'll tell you what, we'll just do it for this. We'll just do it for this example. Um, it's ninth grade. So we'll say, um, we'll say game fees, ninth grade, one official create or all games create. All right. So for one official there, instead of being the referee is going to get, uh, instead of there being four officials, the referee is going to get, uh, he's the only one that showed up. He's going to get a hundred dollars and we're going to apply that. So he's gonna get he's he's gonna show up and get a hundred dollars. So now if I go schedule and don't freak out because I already know we're gonna update. We're going to remove all unassigned. Okay. All right. So watch this, Peter. If I go add slot and this is the only person that showed up, then I can say save. And there's my hundred dollars because it's based on that one official structure that I added. That also goes back to my point being of the system isn't smart enough to recognize if there's one official assigned to a game when three slots or in this case, four slots are listed. When your situation happens where there's two officials assigned, one official didn't show up or one official had to back out or whatever, you come in, you unassign that official, delete that slot that was also assigned and your game fee will update to the structure that you have. So if you do this, no more do you have to go in and remove the slot, manually edit the game fee. Because you have your game fee already set up, when you remove that slot and it turns into a one slot game, the game fee, the, the system will recognize the game fee structure and apply that, that game fee to your game. So I hope that answered your question and actually makes it a lot easier for you because I know of a bunch of assigners that do that where they don't have a game fee set up in your specific example and they have to go in and delete the slot, manually update the game fee when really all you got to do is just create a structure and it does it for you. It's all tied to, if you think about it this way, it's all tied to sport first, obviously, but level, level and then slot. If you've got in your situation, one person gets paid more than two people, then just create a game fee with one person, create a game fee with two, hang on, create a game fee with one slot, create a game fee with two slots, and whatever you do to the to that game slot wise, the system will recognize it. Uh, does manually entering game fees create any issues, concerns at any time? No, um, not really. Um, the only thing that I always tell everybody to remember is um, make sure you verify or uh, right here, make sure you verify, either verify the slot or lock the slot when you make an edit or else that edit won't stick. That's the only thing I tell everybody else, but you can edit, you can edit a game. You can edit a game fee through here at any point in time and you'll be good. All right. What else do we know? We got any more? Yeah, we have quite a couple more, but this one I was going to try to type down. Um, it was a little bit lengthy, so I might as well just kind of also answer this. Ross and Sue are asking when slots are added or deleted, why are the game fees deleted from the remaining slots? And what I was going to explain is that um, we kind of covered this in the beginning where um, when we create this rule on the on the game fee module, you are applying game fees for a number of officials pertaining to the sort of sports and levels that they're going to be participating in. So when you, for example, have a game with five officials under JV and you create your game fees and you delete one of the slots, you now have four officials under that level. And the game fees module doesn't recognize this game 
because you would have to recreate a new game fee for specifically for officials if that were the case. Um, and so it's just Arbiter Sports is not recognizing that specific rule. If you were to add or deduct certain slots in order to maintain the the game fees to stay stable in the games, kind of how what Trey just did here. He had one um, one slot for this game, and it was a, an amount of zero dollars. He adds two slots now, and now they show up as fifty five because he has game fees created specifically for this sport and level where two officials are going to be paid fifty five dollars. So hopefully, Ross and Sue, that answers your question in that scenario. Yeah, um, and that's that's right. I run into that as well, where you 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 just don't have the structure set up for the number of slots that are on the game, and so when you remove a slot, it just wipes out that game fee because it has nothing to look at, and that's it. The simple fix is go in and create the game fee for that structure. I, I just say structure, um, and and it will apply as such. Good answer, Sabina. Staying on the same scenario of one official, can you input? Staying on that same scenario of one official, can you input the game fee for all, and then just delete the other slots when done? In other words, the referee isn't there, but the umpire is. Yes. Okay. So, and and I always so um, sorry. Your name's finance, so I'm going to call you finance. Um, so that that comes into play right here. So let me. That was because I need to change this anyway. Um, all right, so I can go notice the game, the different game fees here. I can say 100 there, 200 here. Um, we'll go 55 for line judge and 50 for the line, uh, for the, excuse me, for the linesman, then 50 for the line judge, right? Okay, so I've saved that. Um, so now if I go back and uh, where's another one? So right here. If if I um, I need to remove, so I want to remove. I'm going to leave umpire in. So I'm going to delete this slot. And I wouldn't do it this way. I would actually use the update feature that I did earlier, but I'm I'm doing this on purpose. Um, so now watch when I get to the umpire slot and I've got it set for 200. There's my 200. So it, if you've got a different slot that pays more than the other slot, where this happens in football quite a bit, the referee gets paid a little bit more than the, well, soccer. The referee gets paid a little bit more than the ARs, then that's the case. Um, and it doesn't matter which slot it is. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be the first one in line. If you want to just make it whichever one it is, then you can delete till you get to that, till you get to that slot and whatever the structure is, because the way this is reading is, um, and it might be easier if we look at it this way. Now that I think about it, where's my Firefox right there? Uh, the way this is reading is I've got a game. 102, 502. I got a game that says one official. It's football, ninth grade, one official, but the slot is umpire. So essentially what this does is it goes back to this game fee that we created and when we go and look at whatever the game fee is, since we're looking at umpire, since that's the slot on, that's what it's going to put. If I change it to referee, it's going to put $100 because the referee gets paid $100. So it doesn't matter which slot it is. You, As long as you put the structure in here on the game fee itself, then it will apply whatever you put on there. So I hope that helps you because I have run into that before where they don't, the admin doesn't set the structure up and they delete the referee slot, but the umpire is the one that actually was there and it doesn't have a game fee, so they got to manually go in and put it. Always just create your structure, create your game fees, and whatever you do to your games, it's going to apply whatever you put in your game fees. So I hope that I hope that helps uh, finance. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Yeah, and I think Brown, uh, William Brown here, he's mentioning that his fees are by league. So he runs his fees by league, and uh, he runs into issues where he links a varsity game and a JV game together, which the varsity game has three officials and the JV game has two officials. And if they don't, if he doesn't create a cross level, the 
uh, yeah, cross level link, the, the fees don't populate properly. And so um, I'm trying to think what what could possibly uh, troubleshoot this error that usually happens because um, I don't get really much a lot of cross leveling issues as well, but I don't know if you can think of anything, Trey, at this moment where this could not populate. I think this is going to, because we're dealing with cross levels, I think this is going to have to take a little bit more time. Um, William, I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to um, type in, if you don't mind typing your group number, I'm going to have to research just a little bit further on that to answer you specifically. But I'm happy to follow back up with you um, when I figure out kind of what's going on, uh, because again, we're dealing with cross levels, and I'd have to I'd have to go in and play with it to answer. The only thing off the top of my head is that is that if the the if there's we don't have a in my mind, it doesn't sound like we have a structure set for three officials on whatever level it is and two officials on whatever level it is and when you link the games together because the system is going okay i see a game here with three officials and a game here with two officials but i don't know what to do with it then then it just gives me a dollar amount of zero because we don't have a structure but when we cross level it it answers it solves the problem so i'd have to go in and and research a little bit more um 109542 okay um, I'll go in and look, I'll go in and look for that one for just a moment. And then I'll follow back up with you. From there, um, I think no other questions are coming in right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well then, I tell you what, I'm going to stay on for a little bit further. Sabino, you're happy to stay on too. Um, I'll probably stay on another 10 or so minutes. That'll get us to 150. If you don't have any questions, you are more than happy to hop off. Um, I'm done with game fees. Again, I recorded this. So if you want to watch this at a later date, you absolutely can. Um, but this will conclude the demonstration part of game fees. So I hope this helped. Uh, by the way, before everybody leaves, I'm going to post this. Uh, I'm going to send this to everybody. If you don't mind taking a little bit of time, like I said, this is this is a uh, this is a this is the first time kind of bringing this back. We did this pre-COVID, then COVID hit, and everything just like everything else went to hell in a handbasket. Um, and now we're trying to ramp this back up. If you wouldn't mind filling out this questionnaire, just seeing the feedback, how it was, did you get anything out of it? If you did, do you want more of them? If you do want more of them, what are some topics? I listed some hot topics there that I've covered there that I've run into before. If it's not listed there, feel free to select the other one and put in a put in a topic that we can cover. I'm going to uh, evaluate this and look at the results that come back and I'll want to do another webinar maybe in a month. If there's a lot of uh, if there's a lot of interest in this, we might even pick it up to bi weekly. Um, but for right now, I'm kind of looking at once a month type thing. Uh, but nonetheless, please take a little bit of time, fill that out if you wouldn't mind. Um, and anyway, with that, I will, like I said, I'll stay on for a little bit longer. Feel free to ask anything that you got, and then we'll just end it from there. So those that are leaving, I appreciate your time. Have a great rest of your day. All right, I'm gonna pay question. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. I, I'm just saying I could probably stay here for a little, another five minutes or so. And so you're cool with that, Trey? Yeah. No, that works. I mean, I appreciate the help answering the question. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pay question. Game suspended. Bottom of first. Officials paid, but system not allowing to assign a to assign officials because officials have already been paid. Oh, OK. Um, all right, John, so the fix there. And I don't always recommend this, but this is the fix I would do. So let's edit a game, right? 
And hopefully this doesn't happen all that often either, but let's edit a game. This game's suspended. You can come in here and mark it as suspended. And what I would do is I would adjust this end time. So let's say you got a game like this, five o'clock. It's suspended, like you said, bottom of the first. You didn't even get 15 minutes into the game, right? But let's say another game starts at 6.45. I'm sorry, at 5.45. So then what you can do is say end time of 5.30, and then that will allow the officials to be assigned to the next game that need to be because what's what's happening is they're they're bumping into each other if I'm if I'm not mistaken um, they're bumping into the games are bumping into each other but a little arbiter tip and and again I don't I don't always recommend this because you can run into problems very quickly if you do a start time and the end time the same the system still recognizes that game. And you can get in there and make it work. So that's that's a simple. Um, so if you like, if you run into a situation where you've already got officials assigned to a game, or you're trying to make a a, a new payment, or you're trying to catch up payment, or you're trying to put somebody on a on a second game or something, start time end time, and you can you can add them to to the game. So I I hope that answered your question. I think I understand it, but kind of threw me off with the officials have already been paid. Uh, what else, Sabino, you got any more? I see there is, um, can you cover league setup for fees from William Brown? Um, and there is another one, I just answered Gary's question here, um, William Jones. Uh, can you hit on adding travel fees and add f to future schedules? Uh, this is a question that I was um, going to ask you as well. Is there going to be a webinar in the future probably? And I think that's where the questionnaire comes that we can um, uh, hopefully set up a webinar of travel fees in the future if that's possible, because I did see some questions on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about covering travel fees in this in this same uh, in this same uh, short hour, but at the same time, I thought, you know, game fees can be cumbersome. We might bump into the hour and not have time to cover travel fees, so I, I waxed, I, I, I nixed it right there at the end. Um, but I don't disagree. Covering travel fees will be great. In a nutshell, um, travel fees are easy, so we, I have some in this group already. The way we have ours, and again, I'm coming from Texas. This is a this is Fort Worth football, the group that I'm in. Uh, whoa, that's not the way that's supposed to be set up. So let me go to a cleaner way um, because it actually is really intuitive. Uh, 105482. <sighs> Payroll travel fees. All right, so we have rings. You travel X amount of miles, you get this dollar, you get $15. You travel X amount, you get 30. You travel X amount, that should say 45, but it doesn't, and then you get 45. So inside each one of these travel fees, I have the schools that live inside those rings. So anytime there's a bill to of Hill Country Christian Middle School, $15 is applied. Regents, Wagner, Tippett, Maynard, it's all, this is all built off of sites. So if the site of the game says Hill Country Middle School, $15 is applied. Wagner Middle School, $15. Hutto, $15. Nelson, $15. And so on. Um, and you can even come in here and add more sites if you need to. Uh, but but travel fees, this is essentially how travel fees work. Um, and then, you know, you can either say it's either a $15 flat, that's all they get, um, or it's based on a mileage, they get $0.55 cents a mile. Um, you can add per diem to it, et cetera. Uh, that's in a nutshell the way the way travel fees work, but I do agree that there needs to be a webinar that covers um, travel fees so we can talk about them in depth like we're doing for game fees. Cool. Um, there's another question here that is coming in. Uh, I enter my game fees according to different amounts, and this is from Malcolm, that the different leagues within our groups use um, when I cascade my game fees, all of the teams don't update. Uh, what should I troubleshoot in order to fix this issue? So I think the question is like, what what should he try to find to make sure that he did it correctly? If he, yeah. 
so one thing I failed to mention, um, and it's actually a critical piece of information, game fees are only applied when there is a bill to on the game. So if your games don't have bill twos and you go to cascade them, then the bill two won't update. Uh, I'm sorry, the game fee won't update because there's no bill two for the system to look at. Um, simple fix, mass update is real easy. Uh, is real easy to get that solved. And again, you can just go in and edit game by game. But that's a, a lot of what I'll do um, to spot check. So let me collapse this. A lot of what I'll do to spot check that I've got everything in line. I'll always come down here and kick on this view bill to um, this view bill to checkbox and I'll just thumb through all my games and make sure that either the bill to is right that yes Aikens is supposed to match that's that's the match um, if I'm hosting a tournament then I need to make sure that the proper bill to is on the tournament because you know it, like anybody knows with tournaments a bunch of teams come to one place that hosting entity is usually the one that pays everybody so if it's being held at Georgetown, then I need to make sure all the Georgetown, all the tournament games say Georgetown on it. And then I'll make sure to, to say, hey, uh, uh, if there's any bill to missing on a game for whatever reason, if there's any bill to missing on the game, then I can either update it in mass or I can update it one at a time. But typically the reason why I, whenever I run into that, uh, into your specific example is because there's no bill to on the game. So I hope that answered it, Malcolm. What else, Sabino? You've been Let's looking. See. Next question, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Just answered those two. Uh, do Texas varsity officials really get a take of the gate? <laughs> so how crazy does it get? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do. Um, I, I, so when I used to live in Austin, I uh, officiated West Lake and uh, Lake Travis one time, and the, the, everybody comes to that game. And the game, the, the check for that game was, I think, around 450 bucks. So I don't, I don't, I don't like it, to be honest with you, and people will think I'm crazy with that. And the reason why I don't like it is because it's difficult on the schools. The schools have to take all their gate, they have to figure out how much they made. And then they disperse it as needed. A lot. Some schools are pretty good about it. Some schools will miss it. I just wish, honestly, that um, that they would make it a game. You know, they make it an average. Make it, um, you know, make it a game fee so that schools can budget for it, so that they can, so that they know what's coming. I, I personally don't like the gate, um, the gate uh, structure as far as game fees go. But to answer your question, yeah, we get, we get gate. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Got that go ahead. Right. Okay. So yeah, Stephen Hill is asking, how do you get the payroll tab added to my dashboard? You would have to contact your account manager, I believe, um, that is in charge of your account in your group. So that way we can get that added for you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Trey. I think that's the process on how you would do that, correct? Yeah, it's one of two things. If you're the lead admin, then the payroll tab is not selected and you can call in and, and we can get it turned on. Uh, but the if you're a sub admin, then you don't have the permission to access the payroll tab. Um, and that too cause, causes it not to appear. So it's it could be one of two things. If you're the lead admin, then it's gotta be turned on for the group. If you're the sub admin, then the lead admin's gotta give you the permission to the payroll tab. One of those two things. Cool. And I think that mostly covers it for right now. All the questions that we have. You're welcome, William. I'm glad um, I'm glad it helped. Uh, again, please, please don't hesitate to uh, to fill out that questionnaire here. I'm going to post it again because it's probably deep in the chat. For those of you that stayed on, um, we got five minutes. I'm 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 happy to stay on another five till the end. Sabino, you said you might have to hop off. I'm I'm yeah. comfortable with you doing that, um, and I can cover it from here. Uh, but with that, um, if there's no more questions, yeah, I know, Linda. I I the only solution to that to cover all four 
to cover all four time zones is if I held a webinar my time at eight, I guess, eight o'clock or seven o'clock, seven, six, five, which would be five Pacific. That would get everybody off. I know I thought about that, but I couldn't figure out a good time to include all four time zones. Um, but I am planning on recording these uh, and then distributing them. We do post them to YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel. Feel free to um, feel free to go look at that. You'll hear a familiar voice on a lot of those videos because I just whenever I get time, I'll record my screen and then put them up there for tips and tricks. Uh, but nonetheless, I'll be posting this video up to um, up to YouTube as well so that you can go back and watch it at a later time. All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Thank you, Trey. Um, Trey will stay on for a while then. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sabino. I appreciate it. I'll thanks. appreciate the help. I got it. I got it from here. Thank you. I do not, Tammy. I haven't. I have not. Uh, I don't have auto sign up there. I need to. I need to. Uh, it is a very powerful tool, um, and one that that I try to advise everybody to use it for whatever reason. They. Uh, I always get pushback on it. Um, I guess it's just because of a scare or something. But auto sign is great. It is. It is. Um, I don't want to call it cumbersome. It is extensive. Because you have to set your rankings up, you have to set your slot ranks up, you have to set your your uh, priorities up. You got to do all those things. You also got to tell your officials to make sure they go in and set blocks and set travel limits and etc. If you're if you plan on giving them that, but once you have all that set up, it is a extremely powerful tool that I absolutely love. So no, that is that is on my list of things to record and put up. Um, it is not there, but keep an eye out because. I need to I need to get it done. Um, uh, call or email, um, William. Just give me a little bit of time to figure out kind of what's going on, but you'll hear you'll hear from me. Uh, all right, for those that have their hands up, John and Ann, I will ask that uh, that you type your question in, please. I know what my um oh yeah I'm good after this I can stay on a little bit later. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, game fees are game fees can be a beast if you if you're not paying attention, if you're not um, if you're not really familiar with it, uh, it can be it can be very cumbersome. It can be stressful, uh, but but once you just play around with it and kind of get a hang of it, then then it then you understand how it works. Um, that's really how I learned it. It really took me just sitting in a group and just just playing around with it creating different structures figuring out how things talk and then i fully understood it um so i hope this was beneficial i hope that i wasn't i, I hope i didn't muddy the water more i hope that um that you see the benefit in them even if you're not using arbiter pay uh, and this is something i should have prefaced at the very beginning even if you're not using arbiter pay you can use game fees and it would you know if 
it would help the officials to know what they're going to be paid. Like they don't have to be paid through arbiter, but they know that if I'm going to go to this game, I'm going to get 150 bucks um, or I'm going to get whatever it may be. So, so again, I hope that, that this piqued your interest. I hope that it explained uh, more things uh, and showed you how to make them work. We've hit our hour mark and I haven't had a, any more questions come in. So I am going to uh, conclude it here. With that, I appreciate everybody's time. Feel free to reach out to us, support at arbitersports.com and uh, 800-311-4060. We're happy to answer any questions you got. Um, so with that, I wish everybody a good rest of their day. Thank you.